What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. The CES devices are coming into the house. One of those devices is the Motorola Click 2. It's a huge upgrade to the original device and it has a 1 gigahertz processor. It ships with Android 2.2. It has a 3.7 inch display which is much larger than the original and the keyboard is much improved as well. You know, it's one of those devices where the original Click was kind of a mid-range, low-end to mid-range device. This borders the high-end device lineup. So good price, a nice device, and appeals to several different demographics. That said, can it compete with things like the G2, the MyTouch 4G, some of T-Mobile's other high-end lineup, or some of the other devices in their high-end lineup? We'll find out in the full review. Special thanks to T-Mobile and Motorola for hooking us up with a review unit, and special thanks to our friends at Best Buy. They're hooking us up with two of these, so we can give them to you and the One Paw Bandit game. So when you go into Best Buy, you don't have to deal with rebates. That $99.99 out the door. Don't have to worry about paperwork, waiting 8 to 10 weeks. Pretty cool there, huh? Enough of that, let's get into the review. Motorola Click 2, is it the device to have on T-Mobile? We'll find out. So here's the Motorola Click, and all in all, you know, it's, I was really impressed by this device at CES. If you have memories of the original Click, this device really is a ground-up revision, in my opinion at least, from the original device. It bumps up the screen from 3.1 to 3.7 inches. It has a higher resolution display, a much better keyboard, uh, and it's packing Android 2.2, 1 gigahertz processor. So it's really one of those devices, you know, I made this analogy in the unboxing. It's like, you know, we have a car for like a Toyota Camry, for example. They totally rehaul it one year. They add some a little bit to the price, but you didn't even get a huge price bump on this device. So it's almost a high-end device for, uh, for a mid-range or low-end, if you will, price tag. So it really is a good deal on T-Mobile, $99.99, $399 if you're on an even more plus plan and you prefer to pay full retail. But as I said, you know, one gigahertz processor, five megapixel camera, it's running Android 2.2 with Moto Blur. It is running Motorola, the full version of Moto Blur, so keep that in mind. Uh, and you can, as you can tell by the uh, the colored buttons down here. And, uh, you know, some people love it, some people hate it, but given the demographic that's, tar or the, you know, T-Mobile's targeting a very specific demographic with this device, and all, you know, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't recommend any other way. Honestly, I still think Android 2.2 in its stock form is not the best operating system for mainstream consumers. I continue to say these overlays like Sense and Moto Blur, uh, you know, help consumers go from feature phone or from a basic smartphone into Android for the first time. But, uh, you know, I've been really impressed with the device. Out of the box, you get T-Mobile's 3G mobile hotspot. Of course, you see the Motorola Blur accounts. T-Mobile's app pack, things like Blockbuster, uh, DL DLNA support. You get uh, some of the Moto Blur stuff, which I happen to like, like IM. And you get, uh, see if I can find it, files as well. Amazon Kindle comes pre-installed. Media Share, uh, T-Mobile's My Device, Motorola's phone portal, Slacker Radio's pre-installed. And then you see T-Mobile's Wi-Fi calling down there as well. So if you're in a spot where reception's kind of spotty, you can hook up to Wi-Fi and make phone calls that way. So, you know, it's a nice device. I've been very pleased. Seven home screens, as you would expect, and transition effects have been smooth. You know, for people that uh, worked with Moto Blur when the Devour, you know, in those days of the Motorola Devour, it really has improved pretty significantly. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, Quadrant Standard scores, as you'll see later, are still not the best on this device, but all in all... Uh, it's you know it's definitely fast and works well for the uh, for the average consumer. Let's jump right into uh, messaging so you can see the physical QWERTY and the uh, and the on-screen options as well. So uh, somebody's checking account balance is forty-two dollars. I feel uh, feel bad for them. Somebody uh, forgot to change their notifications. So you get two on-screen QWERTY keyboards. You get Motorola's multi-touch keyboard, which you can use of course in portrait and in landscape, and you get swipe pre-installed out of the box as well. Swipe uh, is cool, it's not my thing, I'm not very good at it, but uh, how are you? Did you get the idea? I love, absolutely love Motorola's multi-touch keyboard. I think it's the best stock keyboard on the market. Uh, the quick brown skunk went to Walmart. Quick run, so I went to Walmart. The multi-touch keyboard's fantastic, and even on a smaller display, like 3.7 inches, as opposed to the Droid X, uh, the 4.3 inch display on the Droid X, it's a really good keyboard. It performs well. Now, improvement here versus the original Click, you'll notice that the keyboard has changed, and it's in this honeycomb kind of layout, which uh, you know, may be a testament. I hope that the device will get the mobile version of honeycomb at some point. That'd be, that'd be pretty nice. 
But you can see, you know, it's changed. I happen to like it, though. You know, I've been working with the device for a couple days. The keys are still pretty tight. So, uh, you know, maybe a frustration for some people that, uh, you know, want that wanted to loosen up. That said, within about, you know, three weeks or a month of use, I think that'll loosen up. But let's do a quick, a quick test on that. Um, no, that's boring. Let's do the small centipede went to the store. And you can see the autocorrect is still working even when I'm doing it down there. You have a D-pad down here. You notice a little bit of a uh, shift with buttons. And my personal favorite, the space bar, a dedicated row for the space bar, which I happen to like. Uh, just because, you know, the symbols, they have their own dedicated row as opposed to having letters scrunched down there. So it's more like a normal QWERTY keyboard as opposed to, uh, you know, a phone QWERTY keyboard. You can see the design very similar to the Evo Shift, which I have a week full of dogfights coming up with this device so you'll get an idea of, uh, of what these are like in comparison to some of the other devices on the market. But you see camera shortcut, a lock switch, so I can switch that on. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry, ringer. <laughs> I said lock switch, ringer switch. So it turns the ringer on silent as opposed to uh, normal volume, quick and easy for when you're in a movie theater, something like that. Volume rocker, and then on your right side, micro USB. Charging port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top, power button, five megapixel camera with a flash on the back. Now your SD card, micro SD card slot is back here under the battery door, and you have your two gigabyte uh, micro SD card slot that comes out of the box pre-installed. So, of course, it can go up uh, to a higher level, but the two gigabytes is what T-Mobile includes out of the box. Other improvements you'll see because of Android 2.2, the typical stuff, but uh, one thing you'll see that I happen to like is an improvement to the Gmail application. You'll see, you know, if you're working with a Galaxy S device, something that's running Android 2.1, uh, with the exception of the Vibrant, which is in the process of getting 2.2, you'll notice that uh, there's some changes here to the Gmail application. Most notably, let's go into this email, for example. The, ch the header slightly changed. You can reply, you can forward, you can start emails from the header, as you can see. And then when you scroll up, it sticks to the top as opposed to uh, the 2.1 version of Gmail. So nice, you know, a nice feature there. And it's helpful because when you're halfway through the email, you're like, I can't remember who sent this to me. It's listed right there. And then with a simple tap, you can reply, reply all, or forward, and then your typical archive and delete buttons are down here at the bottom. Another change, you know, and this isn't just an Android 2.2 change, this is across the board, and I know I'm kind of going out of order here, but uh, the Android market has improved as well. You'll notice a new design. If you haven't seen this already on your Android device, the Android market's been updated, it's cleaner, it's a nice refresh, and you can see the uh, the carousel up here that'll choose, or that shows recommended applications. And then you have these little three things down here, apps, games, and then T-Mobile, recommended app. So it's not a huge deal, but uh, you know, it's a, it's a definite improvement uh, cosmetically and then it works well in landscape mode as well. So we'll go into T-Mobile. You can see the top picks. And we can go up and down. So for example, let's, you know, download Green Bay Packers theme. And you can see, you know, landscape and in portrait mode. It works well. So there are some minor changes. Uh, actually, let's go back because I want to download a free application just so you can see what it's like. You have your description here, you can click more, some picture samples to see what it looks like, your reviews, related applications, developer info, and the ability to flag it. Now, as opposed, when I click on this to download, you'll notice the network or the permissions pop up down there as opposed to opening up a separate page saying, do you want, you know, do you allow your personal information? Do you allow system tools to be shared, et cetera, et cetera. So just some minor stuff, nothing huge, but uh, overall, it's co cosmetically, it looks much better in my opinion. Let's take a look at the browser. It is running Android 2.2, so the browser does have Flash. And, uh, you know, like a typical Android browser, there's not a huge, if any, or no, no real changes to this. We'll open up PhoneDog just so you can see. And again, I love the way the device looks as opposed to the original device. The screen goes edge to edge. The Chrome makes it look like a high-end device. And it really, you know, I've been very pleased across the board. Again, speed-wise, it works well despite the... Uh, kind of poor Quadrant standard scores, given that it's running Android 2.2. So you see the page loaded pretty quickly, and we'll do some, uh, some pinch-to-zoom tests once the page fully loads. But you can see the Flash advertisements running in the background, and you can see it's not fully loaded yet, so take this with a grain of salt. But 
pinch to zoom, uh, a little bit of a lag, not too much. We'll wait for the page to fully load before we we uh, judge it. But you can see down here, typical Android browser stuff, new window, bookmarks, second or extra windows. So if we want to wait for that to load, we want to open up a new window. Get open up. Whoops. New York Times. And then while we're waiting for that to load, we want to jump back to Phone Dog and see that Phone Dog is already loaded, so we can pinch to zoom in and out. So there's a little bit of lag. Granted, Flash is turned on though, so it's a trade-off. You know, a lot of people like having Flash pre-installed on the device and where it works in the browser out of the box. But this is what you're going to get out of the box. Flash turned on. So the pinch to zoom capabilities are going to be a little bit slower. It's up to you. You can turn it off in the settings, and it does make pinch to zoom faster. Uh, but you have that, you know, you have that option. But for me, you know, and for most people, it's nice to have it turned on. But you do it does suffer a little bit on the pinch to zoom front. It's not bad by any means. To me, that's you know reasonable performance. And then of course, when you double tap, it uh, zooms out and zooms in. So to me, you know, for a, for what this device is and the price point. I'm very pleased overall with the speed. You have RSS feed stuff up here. And subscribe to Phone Dog's RSS feed. And then, of course, you can bookmark whatever page you want to as well, and you can check your history.